a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so let's get started here. Um, start, start off the webinar. My name is Dylan Kotecki, and I am one of the software and video educators here at Onlon. And we have an all about effects webinar today. So we're going to go through a lot of how to add in filters, sort of the basics of, you know, where to find filters, what they, you know, do on top of photos, when you should use certain filters. I'll show you a few of my favorite filters that I like to put on um, the majority of my shots. And then we'll do some masking, um, some basics in masking with the masking brush and the masking bug. And then we'll go more advanced sh to show some like luminosity and color range masks. So stay tuned and we'll get through the basics and then more onto the advanced stuff later in the webinar. So just to get started and some housekeeping stuff, this webinar is being recorded. So if you do need to miss out on any of it or you need to leave throughout the webinar, no problem. It's going to be posted to our blog and our social media and YouTube later today. So you can rewatch it in its entirety um, at your leisure. Um, we also have a Q&A module. So if you do have any questions, um, feel free to hit up that Q&A module. Mo is writing along with me today and um, keep him busy. Um, he'll answer any questions you guys have. Um, and then maybe if you guys ask a question that's pertinent to what I'm doing, I can show it live. So yeah, feel free to hit that up. And yeah, so let's get started here. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is we're just basically going to grab a photo here. I'm gonna grab this photo of these birds and I'll maximize the screen for you guys. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this photo into the edit module. So there we go. And contrary to the entire webinar name, All About Effects, we're probably gonna do at least our basic tone and color adjustments inside of the develop tab. You could do, you could add a, a filter in here to do like a tone enhancer with the same adjustments, but it doesn't deal with the same raw data. So you're probably not gonna get the same look. That's why I usually like to at least set my basic tonalities for my photo within the tone and color pane inside of develop. So we have our photo here and we're inside of develop and this is a raw photo right out of the camera. And the first thing I wanna do obviously is, you know, bring some or shed some light onto these birds here. But first I kinda of wanna deal with this area here. So they're, they're contrary things. I wanna darken this area, but I wanna brighten this area. So the great thing about on one photo raw is that you can pull down on the exposure so I usually just hold down my J key and there's obviously some true white in here without any um, detail. So that's basically just a blob of white. So hold down my J key and then I'll pull down on the exposure till there's just a tiny bit left, maybe right there. And then I'll go down to my shadow slider and I'll pull that up until I can see, you know, what I want to see in the frame. So there we go. And the next thing I'm gonna do is, because I made this image pretty flat, is I'm actually gonna go up and add a little bit of contrast. And then maybe add a little bit of blacks so that my photo has some contrast to it. And then we'll just heat the photo up just a little bit. About right there. Actually, you know what, we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna do all our color inside of effects. So basically I'm just gonna do the tonality inside of develop and we'll do the rest inside of effects. So. We have our tonality here. We'll just hit the backslash scanner keyboard. So there we go. Now we have our birds here. Now what we wanna do is I'm just gonna crop it to remove the sun and then this area over here. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. So now our photo is cropped and we have some basic tonality to it. Now we can head into effects and start adding filters. So inside of effects, this is where we're going to add and you know pile on as many filters as we want onto a photo to get a creative style. So the first thing you're gonna to do to add a filter is simply click add filter. And new in 2019, we actually have this new area where you can search for filters and you can see kind of what the filter does on top of photos. If you hover over any of these um, filter options, you can see a before and after of uh, what that filter does on top of a photo, as well as a description of what it's doing to your shot and some keywords. So if you know you're looking for some sort of look or um, maybe something that that filter does, but you don't know the name of the filter, you can always go in and search it. Or if you wanna search for other filters that you may not know do something, let's say you wanna search for filters that give your photo detail. You could search detail and this will pull up all of the filters that have 
or, or add detail or reduce detail onto your photos. So you have dynamic contrast, which is probably the, you know, the number one for adding detail on your shots. You have the HDR look, which is more of adding detail onto more landscape shots. And then you have, you know, your noise reduction and things like that. You could also do that for other things like glow. Um, let's say you wanted to just make a creative look. Well, you could type in creative and it will pull up all of the different filters that give your photo or have the ability to create a creative look onto your shot. So that makes it incredibly easy. Um, if you're kind of confused on, you know, what filters do what, you know, you can hover over them and it will give you a before and after and also tell you what it's doing. But my favorite thing to do is if you're kind of confused on what a filter does, just add it onto your photo and you'll see what it does to your shot and you'll see if you, you know, you, you like it or not. And you can always just remove it quickly. So, okay. So that's the basics of adding filters inside of this new area inside of Photo Raw 2019. So let's add a filter onto our shot. And I want to add a little bit of detail to these birds here. So I'm just going to click dynamic contrast. So I've added the filter onto my photo. And if I turn this on and off, which in the filter um, pane right here, once you add a filter onto your photo, you have these different options you can do to modify that filter right at the top here. So this one right here to the left is turning your photo or your filter on and off. So if you want to view it with that filter off, just click that and it will show you without it applied. So there we go. You'll see in here, if you look closely at these, at the detail on the wings, that if I turn this off, turn it on, I can see the difference. You also have your masking options. So this little area right here is your masking options for that specific filter. So if I click in here, you have all of the different masking options for that filter, which we'll get into later in this webinar. But for right now, let's just focus on the basics of these filters. So we'll close that up. And then you also have this area in here, which gives you the name of the filter, which you can double click on to rename it. So let's say you're adding you know, layers of dynamic contrast. You can put bird DC for bird dynamic contrast. And let's say you wanted to add a different layer of dynamic contrast for this uh, railing. You could put railing DC. And then you'll know, you know which one you're dealing with and uh, where you want to apply those different filters. You also have this gear right here. Also, okay, well, um, you have this hide and show button, obviously, but you have this gear area right here, and this is your blending options. So let's say you want to add a filter onto your photo, but you want to use a blending option to make it look more realistic or whatever it may be. You can click in here, and now you have all of the different blending options for that filter. You can use different modes. Um, you'll see as, as you're panning through them, there's a lot of different modes in here and I'm not going to explain each one, but probably the most common are like overlay and lighten, just ones that sort of make it blend a lot better onto your shot. Anyway, so those are a little more advanced. We're not going to talk too much about blending options today, um, but if you are um, a more advanced user and you want to know where those are at, this is where those blending options are. So we'll close that up and then let's say you put... Um, a style on here. Let's say you modify these sliders. Boom, boom. And it's crazy and ugly and you hate it and you want to redo it. All you have to do is head up to this little uh, arrow right here and you can reset your filter back to um, step one. And then this X is obviously just to remove the filter from your shot. Okay. So those are some of the, kind of the basic um, how to add a filter and how to see it and then how to remove it and reset it. Well, you also notice that each filter, so let's just add another filter here. Each filter has its own little area of different things you can modify. So you're gonna have, whenever you add a filter, it's always going to be different in here um, because there's different options that you can play with and different things that you can use to modify that filter. So let's say I want to modify this filter. Let's just pull in a little bit more small and then we'll move these down. Basically, I'm just kind of trying to target like the, the small little details on these wings and stuff. I'm not too worried about the large detail. So we'll leave it at that. We'll turn this off and on. And now let's say I want to um, mask this on so that it's only applied to these birds. An easy way to do that is to simply head back into those masking options, invert this, because if you invert this, so if I go back to the, the white, all of that white right there, that whole white means that this, 
filter, this dynamic contrast is being applied to my entire photo. So an easy rule of thumb is white reveals and black conceals. So in the world of masking, white reveals, black conceals. So that means that this entire filter is being applied. If I invert it, that means none of the filter is being applied. There's no dynamic contrast being applied anywhere onto my shot. So let's say I want to apply some dynamic contrast, but I don't want it to be applied anywhere but the, you know, the wings of these birds. I have this entire filter inverted so that it's not being applied. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I have my masking brush selected. That's this tool over here in this toolbar, the little masking brush. Or let's say you have a different tool selected. You have the move tool selected. You can hit B on your keyboard, B, and it will grab your masking brush for you. Easy, easy way to remember it, just B for brush. And let's say you want to switch the mode. Well, I want to paint in this filter onto my photo. I don't want to paint it out because there's, you know, there's nothing applied. I'm not going to be painting out anything. So I can go up to this mode right here and I can change it by clicking paint in, or I can simply just hold down so you can see the plus sign. I'll hold down shift and then hit X on my keyboard. So shift X will switch between the paint in and paint out modes. It's incredibly easy. Go back to paint in. And now what I want to do is I just want to paint this in on the area that I want it to be applied to. So I'll go up and make sure I kind of have my brush settings the way I want them. I obviously don't want that at 21. And then I'll just kind of casually brush this in onto these wings here. So now if we, now if we want to see where we painted those onto, we can do that really easily by going back into our filter here, this bird dynamic contrast filter, and we can look at these masking options and you'll notice that there's the invert obviously is that that's what I selected to invert the mask. But then we have this view right here. So if we click that, this is going to allow us to view and it's probably not the prettiest mask view, but this allows us to view our uh, mask, which is really helpful in um, other situations when you're doing like luminosity and color range masks, which we'll get into later in this webinar. You can also view your masking options by going down here right at the bottom and clicking on this little, um, it'll tell you, show hide the, the mask view, this little uh, circle. And you'll see the same thing. So you can either do it there or you can do it right within the filter. Okay, so now we have that dynamic contrast sort of applied to our birds here. I'm just gonna paint in a little bit more, just kind of clean it up. And we'll just turn it up surreal so I can see what it's doing. Okay, so that's probably where I want it. And now we'll just pull up that again a little bit more and maybe the medium just a tad. And so now if I zoom in, if I turn this off and on, you'll notice it's only being applied to the birds now. Oh, and there's a little area down here. Sometimes when you're doing, uh, or when you're pulling up on the shadow areas in a photo, you're gonna get some um, sort of haloing sometimes. And especially if you start adding dynamic contrast onto things, it's going to start adding structure, which is going to bring in a little haloing around um, your subjects. So what, what you can do is just look for little areas like this. And if you see those, you can kind of brush them out. Did you see that? Oops. So if I brush this in, we'll just brush that in. So if I brush that um, dynamic contrast in, it's getting a little haloing around there. So just watch out for that if you are um, adding dynamic contrast onto a darker figure in your photo. So just brush that out again to make sure there's no haloing right there. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna modify some of the settings within this filter because a lot of people, they add dynamic contrast and that's kind of where they stop. But there's some different um, options you can do to modify the dynamic contrast filter. So you have down here an actual area that you can use to modify the tonality um, of your dynamic contrast. So let's say you are putting it on a darker subject. You can go down and you can actually pull up on the shadows. So if I pull up on the shadows here, you'll see it brightens up that area that I brushed in the dynamic contrast. So this is really helpful, you know, especially if you're adding dynamic contrast onto um, areas where it's a little bit brighter, you can go down and pull down the shadows and the highlights and the whites to kind of tone down that area that you are adding detail to. So let's go down here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow, maybe a little bit of white because there's some of that white in these feathers here. 
Uh, it's probably intense. But now you'll notice that by pulling up on those shadows again, I'm getting some of that haloing. So just watch out for that. And then you can kind of go in and kind of brush that out as you see it develop. There we go. OK, uh, let's zoom out again. And I'm actually going to, again, uh, just modify this tone a little bit. I'll pull down on the blacks just a tad. There we go. So now if I turn this off and on, it's a ton of detail and a ton of light coming into these feathers here. And, it, and if I click the slash key on my keyboard to go back to my original photo, um, you'll see that it, it really pulls out um, a lot of those details and a lot of that um, those shadowy darker areas on those birds because you're using the dynamic contrast filter but you're also pulling out some of that raw data as well so I'll zoom out again Oops. I mean I'll put it back so we can see our modified photo and now let's say we want to add a glow filter but we only want the glow filter applied to this watery area and sort of the area around the birds but not the birds or this dock well, what we can do is we can copy this mask here because we obviously don't want any glow applied to our birds. So we'll copy this mask. We'll add another filter and we'll just search for glow. Boom, got our glow filter. And let's just click lighter to see what it does to our shot. It's a little too light. Let's see in some of these preset styles how they look. Ooh, okay, I love that. So we're doing that. So we turn this off and on, it's being applied to the entire shot. We don't want that, but we copied that mask. So we can go in and we'll paste that mask in it. And once we paste it, it's obviously just gonna be applied to these birds. But if we want that, you know, the opposite, we can just click invert. And now it's being applied to everywhere else, but the birds. And obviously that's pretty intense. So, you know, you can kind of modify that by just using the opacity slider. But you'll see if I zoom in here, to these birds and kind of the detail on these wings and then this area on the water here. If I hit the backslash or the slash key on my keyboard, you'll see it does a whole lot of just kind of, you know, softening up that area, bringing in a little bit more softness to this kind of bokeh, bokeh area on the water. And that was just in, you know, if I wasn't explaining all of these steps, it would have taken you, you know, just a few minutes or if that to do this. So it's a really easy way to, you know, kind of just stack filters without having them applied to a bunch of areas and kind of muddying them up. And you can also use uh, other masking options on top of pasting those masks. So let's say I want, or, you know, like I said earlier, I don't want that glow to be applied to this deck area here. Easy. I'll just go and I'll grab my uh, masking brush like I did earlier. And there's this little thing up here called the masking bug. And the masking bug is basically just an adjustable gradient for your shot. And the way that you can grab that is if you hover over it, it'll tell you, it says masking bug M. So just click M on your keyboard. And now you have the masking bug selected. So what I usually like to do is I'll just leave, there's these presets you can click and it's probably, I think it's always gonna be set at linear top, but you can always just click it. And then what I like to do is just flip it around. And then we'll do this so that it's not being applied anywhere. Oops. Pull that up, flip it this way. Oops. Boom. Okay, so now if we turn this off and on, it's only being applied to this area up here and it's not being applied to this railing. So let's say we want uh, to do the opposite and we only want this area of railing to have things applied to it. So we could just add another filter and let's just add a tone enhancer. And let's just say I wanna darken the, this area of the railing a little bit so that it kind of um, subdues it a little bit and it's a little less distracting. There's a lot of different holes in here and it's, you know, it's a pattern. So patterns are gonna be obviously eye-catching to the, the viewer. So if there's a pattern in a photo, if you can, if it's not the main subject, you probably wanna just you know tone it down a little bit. This isn't too bad, I'm sure this isn't very eye-catching, but. Just to give you an example, we can pull down our exposure a little bit, not a ton, maybe like right there probably. And then contrast wise, I always tend to pull down the contrast if I'm darkening up an area, because if you pull down the exposure on certain areas that you've brought up the shadows. So for example, if I reset this, 
you see these areas in here, if I pull down the exposure, you'll see there's a little bit of that kind of haloing going on where we pulled up uh, the, the darker areas. And by doing that, we pulled out some of the brightness on the edges of that as well. So just be on the lookout for that because that can be kind of distracting. Or you know, if you are a nitpicky editor, um, I do this daily, so I, I tend to look at that stuff more than other people. But So back to what I was saying, uh, we'll drop this down and we'll do the same thing like we did earlier. And obviously that's intense, so we'll just pull back on the opacity. Probably about right there. So now if we turn this off and on, oops, what am I doing? There we go. Now we kind of have this area of subdued. We have our birds right here, and then we have this water. It's looking a little a little too dark, so let's just pull up on this exposure just a tad. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, so that's one example on how to add different filters onto a shot. And so those are more of the basics of, you know, adding filters onto a photo, we'll probably stay in effects, adding different filters onto a photo, kind of the basics of masking, um, you know, just using your masking brush and you'll you see how I did it. I didn't go in and like zoom in and make my brush super small and make every little detail because if, if you're far away enough from a subject that you can't really tell it, I wouldn't be too incredibly picky, especially with detail because, you know, lenses get soft around some of the areas, especially if you're shooting with a, you know, a wider aperture. This shot was 3.2. So, you know, this area is going to be blurry anyway. So I'm not really too concerned with adding too much detail. I would say the biggest um, thing to think about is just taking like the honest photo and, you know, having a shot that's, you know, well composed and stuff. So, okay. So those are the basics of adding a filter onto your photo and the basics of masking. Let's go into a more complex uh, scenario when you're going to need masking or adding filters and masking. Sorry. So we'll go back into browse. And we're going to add this, grab this waterfall photo here. And I love waterfall photos for um, adding different filters onto it because they're incredibly easy to make look awesome if you take, especially if you take like a long exposure waterfall photo. I mean, it's just that kind of flowy photo of water just, you could, I don't know, it's easy to look at. It's easy on the eyes. Okay, so basically what we're going to do again is, contrary to the name of the webinar, is we're actually going to go in and Go into our develop tab. And okay, so before I start this, I'm getting excited to show you guys these things. Mo, are there any questions so far before I just zoom along and? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, there's no questions right now. So just to remind everyone, there is a Q&A module. If you're joining us on Zoom, feel free to use that. I'm here uh, helping out. I can pass anything along to Dylan during these breaks. If you're joining us on YouTube, I'm there answering questions as well. So feel free to use that chat area and ask questions uh, as we go. Awesome. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate it, man. Um, okay, so back to the develop tab. Okay, so I know this is an effects webinar, but these are some tips for if you shoot a waterfall photo. I would probably expose for the highlights. So if you're shooting for a waterfall photo, definitely expose for the highlight area so it's not incredibly blown out because you can always pull up on the exposure and make it blown out as much as you want. So uh, pro tip, expose for the highlights if you're shooting for um, waterfall photos. Okay, anyway. So what I'm gonna do similarly to the bird photo is I'm just gonna kind of bring up the darker areas and try to avoid brightening up the um, nice white soft areas that we have in our water. So let's just pull down on the exposure, maybe just a tad. We don't, probably don't even need to. We'll just leave the exposure as it is. And then we're just going to pull up on the shadows to see where we go. Probably about right there. You know, that's probably a good area to go. We can go into our levels. Yeah, so we're still kind of in the darker area. We definitely don't want it to be over here. All right, so now we'll pull up on our contrast a little bit. And... This is probably key if you're ever pulling up on your shadows more than like 20 is I would add in some contrast or some true black because it's going to flatten your photo a lot if you just pull up on the shadows. 
So definitely add in contrast, give your photo some life and make it pop a little bit more. Okay, so then we'll go back down and I'm just gonna hold down my J key to see any true white or true black. And then I'll just bring in just a little bit of true black. Probably about right there. So backslash key on my key or slash key on my keyboard. Or just black, backslash key on my keyboard. Okay, so not a whole lot of steps, just kind of got the basic look for our shot here. And we're gonna go into effects. And the first filter we're gonna add is we're going to add a color enhancer filter. So we'll add a filter and let's say we don't know what we wanna do, we want it to deal with color. We're just gonna search color. And these are all the filters that deal with color um, on our shots. So I'll just click color adjustment because this is probably either, yeah, color adjustment. Oh, nope, wrong one. Color enhancer is what I was looking for. Okay, so color enhancer here. And what we're gonna wanna do now is we're just gonna wanna kind of pull out any of that blue cast we have. There's quite a bit on our water here and these greens kind of look uh, magenta-y in the areas that they're dark. So what we're gonna do is you can either grab this dropper and drop it into an area that is pure white and it will figure out the color. It will automatically um, modify your color for your shot. Okay, so that didn't do it as planned. So let's just go back and we'll just do it by hand. So we'll reset this. Good rule of thumb, reset if you don't like it. And then just pull up on the green a little bit. Maybe about there, maybe a little bit of tint. And then we'll pull up on it just a tad bit more. Okay, that looks pretty green. Um, a lot more like it looked when I shot it. So now what we can do is we have this filter here and we just you know quickly added just some different color temperature in here just to bring out some of the actual true color of the vegetation here. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get sort of more advanced with the filters inside of effects. So we'll add a filter here and I, I know I wanna add some detail so again, we'll just search detail. If you know what you're looking for, click on you know the filter you're looking for. Click on dynamic contrast, it's probably my favorite to add detail. We turn this off and on, it's being applied to our entire shot. And if I turn this off and on, let's zoom in here to this water. If I turn this off and on, see how that just kind of crunches up that water. It's like, it's like when you put contrast on or detail on the clouds, it just looks crunchy and unnatural. So. The reason you know we're shooting with long exposure is to soften the water. We don't wanna add more detail into it. So we'll zoom out. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to you know, remove the detail from the water as much as possible. The way I can do that is by using a luminosity mask. So I'm going to click, okay, sorry, real quick, this is bugging me. I'm gonna go into this and crop this a little bit. Sorry guys. Boom, way better, okay. So let's say we want dynamic contrast, but we only want it to apply to the vegetation area. So we'll click into our masking options and we'll click luminosity mask. So now let's go into our mask view like we did earlier. And like I was saying, this is gonna be probably the most helpful for that. And so a luminosity mask is, you're basically basing your mask off of the bright and dark areas in your photo. So when I clicked luminosity, basically that told Photo Raw to find all of the bright areas and all of the dark areas and separate them so that this dynamic contrast filter is only being applied to the brighter areas in my photo. Seems pretty simple. It is incredibly simple. So now if you want to have that filter only being applied to the darker areas, this goes back to the masking rule where it's white reveals and black conceals. So in this waterfall area here, that's all being, um, dynamic contrast is being applied to that entire area because it's white. So let's invert this so that it's opposite. So now this whole area is getting all of the dynamic contrast and this water area isn't getting any. Okay, so easy enough, we've inverted it, but there's a little bit of black in here, but if we view this and we turn this off and on, there's still quite a bit being used on the water. So what we wanna do is we wanna modify that luminosity mask. And the way we do that is with these sliders down here, this level slider here. 
So this level slider here is, it, it looks confusing and it may sound confusing, but it's, it's really easy. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Okay, so this left point here, this left right here, this is your blacks. This is your blacks on your photo. This middle area here is your midtones. This is the midtone area on your shot. This area is your highlights. This is your highlights for the photo. So you'll see that we have this dark area here, this dark area that we want to make a little bit more dark. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna pull back on the midtones and we're gonna pull back on the highlights because we want to bring in more you know, black into the darker areas in our photo. So we're going to have to pull back on our midtones a little bit. You'll see how that brings in more dark into our photos, but because this area is full of highlights and it's all white, if we pull back on our highlights over here, then it will target that area a lot more and bring out some of those darks for our luminosity mask strictly within those brighter areas in the water. And then this is where you just kind of play with it. This is where you kind of move these sliders around a little bit to get how you want it. Probably about there. Okay, so now let's view this mask. And now if we go in here, oops. Sorry guys, okay. So now if we view this mask and we go in here to the water, actually real quick, I'm gonna pull down the exposure a little bit. Okay. So now we go in and we turn this mask on and off. You see how very little of that is being applied to the water and it's only being applied to those darker areas where there's rocks. So we still have that soft water that we want, but now we have some awesome detail. Also, the detail is a little bright. You know, it's a little too dark in here. We don't have a whole lot of, you know, contrast between the water and then this foliage over here because there's a ton of just green sticks. So what you can do is you can go back down into those that tone area and you can add in some contrast of your own. You can pull down on the blacks a little bit and the shadows to kind of darken those areas up. There we go. Now it's a little bit darker. There's a little more contrast and we still also have this nice flowing waterfall area. Now let's say for example, we don't want, um, we want to add a filter onto our photo. Let's say we want to add some nice glow to our water, but we don't want it applied to this foliage area. Well, that's easy. We can do the same thing we did with the birds and we'll copy this mask. Cause if we view this, you know, we've done a pretty good job of separating this area of water and this area of foliage. Actually, we could probably even go in and we'll just do this. Okay, so that looks a lot better. Now we'll copy this mask again, just like that. And we'll go up, we'll wait till it renders. And then we'll go up, we'll add another filter and we'll add the glow filter. I know we're kind of adding the same different filters, but it's just the easiest, it's probably the easiest one for waterfalls is glow. Um, I'm sorry. It just, it, it looks really well. It looks really good on it. Okay, so we, now we have our glow filter applied to our shot and let's just click on the preset lighter. You'll see that's a ton of glow, ton of glow on the water, looks great, but it looks kind of janky on this foliage area. It looks too dreamy and there's not a lot of detail and it's muffled up. Okay, we don't want that being applied to that area. So we'll go back into the masking options for glow and we will click paste. Now we want what we want to do is we want to invert it. There we go. So now the glow, if we click on and off, is only being applied to that area on the water. Which is cool about these luminosity masks is then you can go back in and you can actually modify the mask again. There we go. So now we have this nice glow to our water and we have some detail into these, um, into the foliage over here. Now let's add another filter and let's add, this is one of my favorite filters to add onto my photo. And this is a great filter if you're kind of wanting to add maybe more of a, a moody matte look onto your shot. I'm um, of the younger generation and we love 
sort of that moody, um, like filmy look on our photos. I don't know what it is, but so you want to do that, click curves here and easy way to do it is this is your black point on your curves. Um, let me just quickly explain the tone curve for people that don't know. Um, so the tone curve is just based on three things, your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights, just like pretty much anything in photography. And this area down here is your, your black point or your shadow point, but they're kind of vice versa. And then your midtones and your highlights. So you're going to pull up on this black point, which is going to kind of, this is what gives it the matte look is you're pulling up on the blacks. So it's trying to pull out all of that dark information from the blacks and make it brighter, which gives you that matte look. Well, if you want to make it a better looking matte look, you can pull in so it removes some of that brightness and makes it a little bit darker. Just like that. So now we've moved in this point a little bit. We've added some sort of matte look to our shot. And now what we want to do is we'll just pull up on the midtones a little to give it a little boost. About right there. But let's say we only want that applied to this area or the greens. Let's say we only, only want it to apply to the greens. So we can literally click in here and we'll click color range mask. Grab this and we'll just drop it on probably the darker green. And it's going to sample that color and then it's going to supply us with a mask based on that color range. Okay, so now if we view this mask, it's being applied to all of that green, but we can pull down on this color range. You'll see how if you pull it down, and now if I view it, oops. But you'll see it's, you know, it's just targeting those greens. It's only targeting those greens because I have that green color selected as my color range mask. And you can also use you know, the color dropper over here to grab it, you know, whatever you may use. And I'll just pull up on this color range just a tad. We view this. Maybe a little bit more, maybe like 15. Okay, perfect. So now we have kind of this matte look, but it's not being applied to our water because we used a color range mask. So it's an easy way to sort of mask out areas in your photo that are, you know, especially with this, there's a ton of vegetation. The green color is going to cover it all. Um, just, yeah, sort of a simple way to separate colors within the masking realm of filters. Okay. Are there any questions so far, Mo? I think we just have like one more photo. Yeah, no questions right now. You're doing great. I'm covering everything on the YouTube front. Nothing's coming in on the Zoom front. So if you are here with us on the Zoom conference, uh, don't be shy. Use that Q&A module uh, if you feel inclined to. Awesome. Thanks, man. So, okay. So now we have this photo and we'll just add maybe a couple more filters onto it to give it some life. So we'll add another filter. And one of my favorite filters, especially if I'm shooting like a, an area like this where there's a ton of foliage and there's not a lot of separation between foreground and background, I like to add a vignette. Usually click vignette. And vignette, probably the most popular preset is Big Softy. I'll add a nice vignette onto your photo here. And what a lot of people don't know is that if your vignette starts in the middle of your shot when you click that preset, but let's say your subject is over here and you want it to be, you know, right around the subject, you can click this little button here to center your vignette and then you can drag it around and center it around your subject. So now I can pull back on that. Boom. And also down here, a lot of people don't know this also, is that there's types of vignettes. You have all of these different types you can use. I tend to stick with subtle or priority. Um, priority is more of a uh, kind of a highlight priority vignette. So it kind of keeps some of those highlight, highlight detail into your shot. I'll just use subtle, I like that. Okay, so that's easy way to add some filters and mask with uh, luminosity mask and some color range. We'll just show another example here. 
Here's a question for you, Dylan. Okay. Um, if you're ready. A uh, question from Bob is, do you find the red overlay mask useful? Uh, when do you use it? When, I guess, do you find a place for the red uh, overlay? I never use the red overlay mask. I never use it. <laughs> <laughs> I never do, Bob. I'm sorry, man. I, I think maybe when you're modifying things with a with a stark contrast of brightness and light i'm not sure let me go in and we'll just play with it and see if what would be the advantages so where were we at we'll go into dynamic contrast Okay, so yeah, the advantages would be using the over red overlay to basically see where that's at as seeing the picture. That would be a huge advantage. I'm just so used to using the other views. But yeah, Bob, good point. This would be a great way to view the mask and the photo itself. So if you wanted, you could do either. They're both great. And then if we went into glow, boom. Now you'll see where all of that glow is being applied or the Sorry, where the glow isn't being applied, rather. Okay. But if you want to access those, that was probably quick. But if you want to switch the mask views, um, just go into mask, view mode, and then red overlay or grayscale. That, that probably answered your question, Bob. I'm hoping. Yeah, I think that was perfect. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. So we'll go back into browse. Go in here, click edit. Oops. And this will just be a quick way to um, add, not really replace a sky, but just add some life to a sky really easily, especially if you have like a reflection in the water and they're similar in brightness. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. What we're gonna do is we'll probably just leave this as it is, just raw, that doesn't look too bad. And we're actually just going to crop it a little bit. Maybe a little less. Air. Love that four by five. Okay. So now let's just level this. Boom. Okay. So now what we want to do is we just want to add a filter onto our photo that brings in a little bit of texture onto our shot. So we'll add a filter and we'll add textures. And obviously it's being applied to the entire shot and you have all of these different textures you can add onto your photo. I usually like to go into these categories of skies just to see what they look like. You can just hover over them and they'll kind of give you an idea of what it's gonna look like in your shot. Um, but if you find one you like, which earlier today I was playing with these and this powerful clouds came up and it it's like it matched the bottom up here and it looks like it's reflected, which is, this is just an entire photo. This isn't like a reflected image on the bottom. So I immediately put that on the shot and it looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is obviously that doesn't look real. So go into my masking options and I'm gonna do the same thing. If I turn this off, the area that I want this to be applied to is a lot darker, or I mean a lot brighter than the areas that I don't want it to be applied to. So this whole area on the water is darker than the docks and these rocks and these trees. And obviously, you know, I can go in and remove it from these boats when I need to, but the majority of this photo, the where I want this texture applied to um, is brighter than the area I don't. So when that happens, you can just click luminosity. And there we go. Now we kind of have this nice sky, um, just, just with one click, it's, not crazy blended where it's natural, but still, I mean, it looks pretty decent for just clicking luminosity mask. Anyway, so one thing I'm gonna do is because you'll see down here is this round part and there's this sort of separation in clouds where you can see the blue. Well, that's not happening up here. So what you wanna do is just to give them a sense that it, you want everything to be realistic in a sense. So what I wanna do is I'm actually just gonna go down to scale and pull that up a little bit. Oops. 
oops, sorry, just a little bit there, just so it's a little bit bigger and this area is sort of a little bit bigger. So it looks like it's, I don't know, like this area looks continuous with this area. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I just wanna make this look more realistic. So I use my luminosity mask, but now I want to remove it from obviously these boats in this area over here. So you can do that. Just grab your masking butt brush, butt brush, grab your masking brush and you can brush out, you know, just where you don't want it to be applied to. Oops. Then you can kind of just go in and there we go. Usually I'll go in if I'm blending a sky like this and just take a little bit off, like a 20% opacity off. See that kind of just deadens it a little bit. I mean, it's a little much right now. So now if we turn this off and on, And you could also go in and you could also probably bring in um, more of this one if you wanted to. But that looks pretty, that looks okay so far. We could also remove some of it too also. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is obviously, I should remove that. This area on this bridge is shaky and it looks like it's reflecting, but this cloud looks like it's perfect. So we don't want that obviously. So what we can do is we're just going to copy this mask. Wait for the copy. So it's copied now. We're gonna add a filter and we're going to search for filter that adds blur. So now we wanna add some blur and what we want to add is we want to add some motion because uh, obviously the area in the water is, it, there's some motion in it that's giving it a blur. So now we have some motion blur. We'll click in, we'll paste this mask. And we'll add, oops, sorry. We got to invert the mask. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Whoops. I'm getting confused. I'm confusing myself. I'm sorry. There, now we can brush that in a little bit more. Oops. Okay, so now let's go up and let's remove it from everywhere but the water. Oops, probably want my opacity 100. Okay, there we go. See how much that makes a difference in the water right there? Actually, we can probably remove that texture. There we go. But yeah, so that makes a huge difference. Oops. Okay, so that's just an easy way to, if you're trying to replace a sky or, you know, just bring in some texture to the the clouds or whatever it may be. That's an easy way to do it. Um, so if we hit the backslash scanner keyboard, you know, in just a few minutes added, you know, just some, some life into our shot. And now what we can do is we can actually just add style. So we'll go in and we'll add a filter here. One of my favorite filters to add onto a photo. I didn't really go over too many of my favorite filters. Um, I'll show you right now a couple of them, but 
My favorite one probably of all time is either Lutz or Sunshine. Um, I think Lutz is awesome just because it adds so much style um, onto your shot. And I tend to use any of these color pop ones. I love this color pop um, blues. I love this shot. I love this look, the way it adds onto the photo. And then you can always go down and just pull back on the opacity and play with it a little bit. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, you know, incredibly moody, cool looking photo. Now we can even add, like we did earlier with those curves. And we'll pull down on the highlights a little bit. Okay, sorry, I got too ahead of myself. So Sunshine is also one of my all-time favorite filters. Just because it, okay, so what Sunshine does is it essentially uh, darkens the darker areas in your photo and brightens the brighter areas. So just like Sunshine would do. So it's a good filter if you're just trying to ever, uh, you don't really know what filter to add onto your photo, but you want a little bit of life. Sunshine is probably the one to go to. Um, all right, so now we have this, you know, this look we have. Now let's add another filter. And we'll add one more filter. Actually, we'll add a couple more filters. So split tone is also a good one if you don't really know what you're looking for. Split tone uh, is such like a gentle filter on your shot. So my favorite one is warm. Um, you'll see it just brings in like a, not, a lot of nice warmth and um, it's basically bringing an orange into your highlights and then some dark um, blue into your shadows. So if we swap these, it'd be the opposite. Um, that's the way split tone works is basically you're putting in a color for your uh, highlights and you're putting in a color for your shadows. So that looks pretty good right there. And then we'll add one last filter and then we'll be done. Unless you guys have any questions. So if you have any questions and by the time I'm getting done adding this last filter, feel free to hit them up. Um, speak now or forever. Hold your peace. We'll add another vin filter. We'll add the vignette. Then we'll just add big softy. And we'll put it around this boat here, just like that. Boom. Now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, you know, that's our, wait, did we miss with? Yeah, and we didn't even, that was raw out of the camera. So this is raw out of the camera, and this is with, a ton of filters applied, but we didn't really, you know, we didn't spend too much time applying them. So there you go. That's, you know, easy way to add style, add, um, you know, a nice look, especially if you're, you're replacing a sky and you have a bunch of water. Um, texture is a really quick way to um, bring a lot of creative style to your shot. Are there any last questions, Mo, before I tell everybody peace? Yeah, there's uh, nothing here uh, that you need to cover. So I think you are good to close it on down. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mo, for riding along with me. Always appreciate it. Um, thanks, guys, for joining me. I hope that shed some light on uh, you know, the basics of adding filters to you know masking them and so forth. So thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more webinars. Mo's got one next week, and I got one the week after that, and that continues all year. So we got webinars for you guys coming up. Uh, stay tuned for more, and really appreciate you guys uh, joining me today. Have a great weekend.